Hi, I'm Mary Poplin with Imagineer Systems and Boris Effects, and today I'm going to show you how to use the Mocha Pro plugin inside of After Effects to do a remove. Now this will work inside of Avid or Premiere or anything else that the plugin will work in, but right now we're going to show you how to use it in Adobe products. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our effects and presets, and we can simply type in Mocha Pro and drag and drop it right onto our clip. We can also find our effect right here in Mocha by Imagineer Systems, Mocha Pro, right in the effect panel. But in this case, we're just going to drag it and drop it from the effects and presets. We're going to launch Mocha just by clicking the big Mocha button. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a shape around the object we want to remove. In this case, we want to remove this running guy. Now, notice that I'm drawing a loose shape around him. The reason I'm drawing a loose shape is because if I draw a really tight roto around him, when I try to remove him from the scene, I may leave parts of him on the background, like half pixel edges. We're just going to hand animate this top shape because it's not really worth tracking. It's such a simple shape. And as long as he stays inside that shape the whole time, we don't have a problem. We're going to call this Guy Remove. And it doesn't matter what you call this layer, just so long as you can keep track of what it is. We're going to turn the gear off because the gear is the tracking or rendering icon inside of Mocha. And we're going to go ahead and zoom out a little bit. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a background shape. Now, the background shape is the important part because the background shape is actually how you do your remove. So we're going to look in this shape to replace this shape. That means this actually has to be tracked. Our background has to be tracked, and it has to be tracked super well. So I'm going to turn my surface tool on, because the surface tool is how we check on the track. It's also how we export our corner pin data, but we don't need corner pin data for a remove. We're going to turn our grid tool on, because it actually aligns right with our surface tool, and will give us a really good idea of what this track is doing. We're going to call this BG. And we're going to drag it under our guy remove. Now we do that because Mocha treats everything at the top of the layer pile as closest to the camera. So if you rotoscope from the foreground to the background, what you will do is you will have holdout mats for every layer beneath that. In this case, guy remove needs to be above BG so that we don't actually track the guy shape while we track the large shape, okay, for the background. Now we're going to turn our mats off. Let's track translation, scale, rotation, shear, and perspective. And let's go ahead and go to link to track, and we're going to select none. Now this is right in our layer properties. When we select link to track none, what we do is we actually unlink our shape from the track. That means that Mocha's shape will read all the pixels that move underneath it, and then as we track, the surface tool will continue to track, but the shape will stay still. It reads everything like a scanner. Now let's just check our track and make sure that we're satisfied with that. Let's actually just adjust this so it looks, so we can tell. Okay, yeah. So I feel like that is tracking correctly. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is really simple. I'm going to click on my guy remove, and I'm going to click on my remove layer. Now inside of my remove layer, I'm going to turn off my grid and surface tool because I don't need them anymore. But I'm going to select my guy shape. And then we're going to go into edge properties. I'm going to select my Uber key so that I can do a ripple edit across this entire shape because I've already animated my shape. And we're going to add some edge feathering, just like this. Now watch, my edge feathering is applied all the way across my remove. That's going to give me a nice soft matte edge to blend my shape. Let's go ahead and turn that off again. Inside of our remove, we have a couple of options. We can actually limit the first frame and last frame so we can limit the range of our remove. And we can tell Mocha how many frames to look before and after our remove in order to remove this object from the background. What we're going to say is we're going to leave it on default, which is 51 before and after, because this is only a 51 frame shot. We are also leaving it as a step of one. That means we're going to look at every single frame in order to replace this object. Now, if we were dealing with a thousand frame shot, we'd want to step this up to maybe five or ten, so that it would actually cut down on how many frames that Mocha is looking at in order to replace this object. That's going to really increase your speed when you're rendering. 
We don't need to worry about illumination modeling because there's not any illumination modeling happening. But if there was, we could use linear to raise and lower the hue, saturation, and value of this replace, okay, of this remove over time. Or we could use interpolate to actually do a gradiated hue, saturation, and value change around this object, depending on what the pixels around it are doing. Now, please note that linear illumination modeling is fast, but it actually does take a little bit of a render time hit, and then interpolate will actually give you a quite significant render hit, so you only use it when you're dealing with things like caustics or smoke. Now, on our guy remove, we're just going to simply go ahead and do a test render for one frame. Let's see how that looks. And I feel like that's removing properly. So we're going to save this, and we're going to close it. And now for speed, what we're going to do is we're going to go right into our resolution and we're going to do half resolution so that this will really speed up as we render it. Now we're going to go to our module renders. We're going to check render and we're going to render our remove right back to our timeline. Notice we did not render this whole thing in Mocha. It's actually reading from the timeline in After Effects and rendering back into After Effects from Mocha. So when we hit play now, it's going to remove our guy from the scene. So that's a really simple breakdown of how to use the Remove module inside of the Mocha Pro plugin right inside of any Adobe product. If you have any questions, you can find us at www.imagineersystems.com.